right, I was uh, contacted by a viewer who uh, lives about an hour from here, and he said a lady had a garage full of test equipment, and her husband had passed away some time ago, and she was in the process of uh, trying to figure out what to do with everything. So he sent me some photos, and um, it sparked my interest. I mean, there was a lot of stuff, <laughs> a lot of stuff. Um, there were quite a few old, like 7,000 series Tektronix scopes with all the plugins and everything. Those never interested me. I was never too excited about those. Um, there was a bunch of old HP equipment. Uh, that one old, um, LCR meter, uh, I can probably just show you right here. Uh, that thing right in the middle there, <laughs> he had two of those, and I thought they were pretty rare to um, start with. So, yeah, he had two of those. Um, he had a bunch of voltmeters of various types, but nothing nothing better than six and a half digits. So, um, I already have meters that will do that. Um, there were some wave tech instruments that uh, uh, I used to work there. Um, there was some Pacific measurement interest in, in uh, instruments, uh, peak power meters and stuff that, um, yeah, if you need something like that, they're great, but I have no need for them. Um, so anyway, I looked and looked and looked and looked and looked, and um, in the photograph, uh, this unit here piqued my interest. I've always wanted one of these. And when I was there, I noticed he had, uh, so what, these are uh, Electronic Development Corporations, EDC. EDC was eventually bought by Cronheit, um, and uh, so these are voltage standards. Uh, this one's good uh, from zero to 10 volts, 10.00000, so very, very accurate. And this one is a, a similar version, but in binary. So again, it would be 10, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, so these are identical units, except this one has uh, BCD switches in the front, and this one has rotary switches in the front. So um, I bought both thinking that maybe if something was wrong with one, I could use parts to fix the other one. Um, I've done a cursory check on these, and they both seem okay, although uh, wildly out of calibration. Not wildly, but I mean, out of calibration. Uh, for, for the type of accuracy you want out of these things. Um, they're pretty standard, uh, pretty uh, simple designs, although you can't get any schematics for these things. Schematics do not exist for these things. If anybody has a schematic for either one of these, let me know. There is a schematic for, so this is an MV100. Uh, there is a schematic for the 106, and the 106 is very, very similar. And I think I could just use the 106 schematic and that'll be fine for this one. Uh, this one is the model 501J. There might be schematics for the 501J. I know there's a user manual for the 501J. I'm not sure about schematics though. Um, so anyway, uh, I have these and uh, I got one, actually I got two more things uh, at the sale. So uh, yeah, let me show you those. I've always liked the looks of this power supply. It's a precision power supply, so it's kind of like a poor man's version of this other one down here. Um, this one goes from, it's got an out, outer, outer dial and an inner dial. So the inner dial goes to nine. So this will do 9.999 volts. Um, and precisely, I'm assuming these are, have uh, pretty good specs on them, although I'm not quite sure, so it'll do Oh, it'll do zero to 10 volts and 10 to 20 volts. Oh, so you get to add 10 volts. So zero to 10, 10 to 20, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know that. And there's a little tweaker at the bottom here for the next digit. So it's, it's, it's 9.9999, uh, this one down here. There's a current limit, AC on, I guess that's power. <laughs> and then volts and milliamps. You can read the milliamps here. The meter go, oh yeah, it says 500 milliamps. So zero to 20 volts, zero to 500 milliamps. So anyway, yeah, I've always liked these little power supplies, never owned one. So I don't know if this one works, but we'll do, we'll give it a go. Um, and then the other thing that he had was he had a box of the, I probably should just grab the whole box. Um, and, uh, but I didn't have any use for them, but I wanted to buy one of these so I could tear it down. So this is an ISO temp 
uh, probably a double uh, double oven uh, oscillator, but it's three megahertz, so it's it's not much use to most people. Uh, three megahertz. Uh, it still would make a nice standard if you needed something stable, but it is three megahertz, so it's a little bit yeah limit limits its use a little bit. Um, but uh, this one is all uh, soldered shut, and I thought we would cut this one open and take a look inside. Now I, I've seen inside double oven oscillators before. Um, and they're pretty interesting and much more complicated than you than you would imagine they would be. So I don't know about this one. Um, so uh, we'll tear into this at some episode and, and take a look inside. This one is dated 1996. Um, I don't know what the dates are on these things. Um, the one cool thing about... So I, I asked the lady, you know, where... Um, where, where did this stuff come from? And I guess he just liked to uh, do auctions, uh, 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 online auctions, I guess. Uh, although I'm not quite sure wherever, wherever these may have come about. Um, there were a lot of, there seems to be, I should say, there seems to be a lot of test instrumentation down in the Monterey Bay area, which is where this was. Um, and it may have come out of the Naval Research Lab there, um, and these may be old Navy things. Um, now, one of the interesting things about this unit is, let me show you the tag on it. All right, Los Alamos. So this came out of the Los Alamos lab, uh, you know, the nuke lab. <laughs> so that's interesting. So yeah, maybe maybe it came out of some military project. Um, Los Alamos, I like that. I don't, I'm not going to remove that tag. I've got another instrument that has a... Uh, uh, Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, uh, Atomic Energy Commission. <laughs> that's a cool one. It's an old triplet meter. Um, but yeah, this one's Los Alamos, so, so that's pretty cool. All right, there you go. This is what I was doing yesterday. Um, uh, it uh, took me most of the day, but an hour drive there, an hour drive back, an hour there. Um, so most of my afternoon was spent at this point in time, if somebody asks, hey, you know, can you give me the address or can I contact that person or thing, it's, it's not that kind of a deal. Um, I don't know where the stuff will go from here and I can't point you to any particular direction to go. Um, as I said, most of the stuff was pretty old and uh, hopefully it will end up someplace that will be accessible by most people. But uh, as for right now, it's just in some some lady's garage, and uh, as with a lot of barn finds, that's the way it goes.